Elon Musk has had his heart set on colonizing Mars for quite some time now. This is why he created SpaceX in the first place. And based on recent reports, it looks like he's fully focused his attention completely on the Starship project for now. In this video, we'll be taking a deeper look into just how this spacecraft could help us colonize other planets. But before we start, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this. Now, let's get into it. The Starship is a critical component of the Mars mission. Prior to the conception of the Starship, humans with all of their technology didn't have any spacecraft capable of taking us to Mars. So the first riddle that Musk had to solve to get to Mars was how to get there. This is where the concept of Starship came up. The Starship is a gigantic spaceship that has the capacity to carry at least 100 people and up to 200 tons of cargo in a single ship. The Starship's a game changer for future space travel. Five years back, when the Starship was simply a design concept, Musk stated that, I feel fairly confident we can build the ship. We know how to build it. We've done much harder things like building a rocket. I feel more confident that we can build the ship than I did about building the rocket. Five years later, SpaceX has successfully managed to land the Starship after multiple failed landings. And now, SpaceX is planning to carry out the first orbital test for the Starship to see how it will fare in orbit. Starship is going to be used for the Lunar and Mars missions. At this point, Elon Musk is confident that the first unmanned mission to Mars can be sent by 2023. In order to go to the Moon, Mars, or beyond, the Starship will serve as a second-stage vehicle. The Falcon Heavy rocket, however, will be the first-stage booster for these missions. You may remember the 2018 test flight of the Falcon Heavy booster, where Musk sent the Tesla Roadster sailing through space. The Falcon Heavy, like the Falcon 9 boosters, are reusable and will land back on Earth after putting the Starship into orbit. So, for future missions, the Falcon Heavy will be the first stage, and the Starship will form the second-stage vehicle in a long-distance space spacecraft that will safely deliver man to Mars. The combined structure at launch will be almost 400 feet in height and weigh over 1,400 tons. The Starship is comprised of three main parts, a nose cone, a rocket booster, and a spaceship. The nose cone, called the heat shield, protects the Starship during launch. The rocket booster then propels the Starship into Earth's orbit and the spaceship itself is the main capsule that will carry passengers and cargo. SpaceX has a different name for each section of the Starship. The nose cone is called the hopper, the rocket booster is called the super heavy, and the ship is called the Starship. The Starship is made from reinforced stainless steel, which is an interesting choice of material because these days the usual choice for spacecrafts is carbon fiber for its durability and lightweight properties. However, SpaceX has gone for stainless steel because of its low cost. Carbon fiber ends up costing $200 per kilogram after wastage. Stainless steel, on the other hand, costs only $3 per kilogram, allowing SpaceX to save a fortune on cost. The strength to mass ratio of the Starship is in fact better than other carbon and fiber-based design concepts. Some part of the Starship structure that will house the passengers or astronauts will be made with a special type of cryogenically treated stainless steel. This will end up fortifying the structure of the Starship. The stainless steel structure also serves the purpose of making the ship require zero maintenance upon landing. According to the initial plans, the Starship should be ready to launch within three hours after landing. It's been designed in such a way that it will require zero maintenance. In fact, the only thing that will need to be replaced is the propellant. The stainless steel also gives the Starship a retro silver look, which, according to the information that we have so far, is set to be how the final version of the Starship will look. So, no pink Starships are currently in the works. Sorry, guys. Anyway, enough about the materials. Let's talk about the main driving force that will get this spacecraft to Mars, and that's the engine. Once the Super Heavy boosters are detached and returned to Earth, the Starship will depend entirely on its own powerful Raptor engines for the remainder of the voyage. The ship will have six Raptor engines upon liftoff. Three of these engines will be sea-level engines for atmospheric flight, and three engines will be for flight in the vast vacuum of space. The Raptor engine is SpaceX's most powerful to date. It weighs about 300 tons and can deliver about 24 million pounds of thrust. It took SpaceX almost a decade to design and develop these engines. The Raptor engine is the throbbing heart of the Starship because these engines will not only power it through space, but also play a key role in landing the Starship on Mars and then lifting it off from Mars for the Earth-bound return journey. This is why it was so vital for these engines to be powerful enough to lift the Starship into the atmosphere of Mars 
and bring it back to Earth. The Raptor engines are powered by methalox, which is a combination of methane and liquid oxygen. NASA and Falcon 9 usually use liquid oxygen or liquid hydrogen. Methane, therefore, is a very unusual choice for rocket propellant, but it's been chosen for a reason. Firstly, methane is less dense than liquid oxygen or liquid hydrogen. Secondly, the Starship is going to Mars, and in order to be able to come back to Earth, the Starship will need to be refueled on Mars. Now, how are we going to refuel the Starship when there's nobody on Mars yet? Well, apart from a few rovers. The plan is to synthesize methane from subsurface water on Mars and atmospheric carbon dioxide through a process known as the Sabatier process. In the Sabatier process, hydrogen and carbon dioxide react at high temperatures in the presence of a nickel catalyst to produce water and methane. The water can be recycled on Mars and used for the creation of a small settlement, whereas the methane can be used as a propellant to refuel the Starship for its Earth-bound trip. Refueling the Starship in this manner would make the whole journey more cost-effective and sustainable. Pretty clever, right? The Starship has been designed to carry humans and other payloads to distant planets in and beyond our solar system. The payload bay is 30 feet wide and can carry bigger satellites, which will open the possibility for us to discover worlds on the other side of the universe. According to Elon Musk, the crewed flight of Starship can be fitted with almost 40 cabins for the passengers in the payload bay, and each cabin can house three people with ease. In addition to this, the payload bay will also have common areas for the passengers, a galley and a fortified ship shelter zone where the passengers or astronauts will be able to take shelter during particularly high-intensity solar storms on Mars. According to the plans and schematics of the Mars mission available so far, once the Starship is put into low Earth orbit by the Falcon Heavy boosters, they'll descend and land back to Earth to be reused. The Starship will orbit the Earth because at that point it will have used a significant part of its fuel to escape the Earth's gravity. It will not have enough fuel to make it all the way to Mars. There will be a second Starship already in low Earth orbit, which will refuel the Starship that will be headed to Mars. This second Starship will not have passengers, and its total payload will be the fuel that it will carry to refuel the Mars-bound Starship. Think of it as space refueling, just like how we see air tankers refueling fighter jets on long flights. The refueling of the Starship will happen after both Starships dock with each other through their rear docking ports. Once the Mars-bound Starship is refueled in low Earth orbit, it will set course for Mars. The landing sequence of Starship is kind of unique. Upon entering the atmosphere, the Starship goes into the belly flop maneuver, where it basically falls through the atmosphere horizontally. This is where the two front and two back fins come into play. Although these fins kind of make the Starship look a bit ugly, they serve their purpose well. These fins maximize the drag during the horizontal fall, effectively reducing the fall speed to minimize fuel usage during the landing burn. Once the Starship gets close enough to Earth, it will execute a landing engine burn to land the ship vertically, like the Falcon 9 boosters that we've become used to. In a few years' time, we'll become used to hearing, Starship has landed on Mars on a regular basis. Musk wants to see the first settlement on Mars built during his lifetime, and it definitely looks like he's doing everything within his power to make this dream come true. But by doing so, he's also helping humanity take giant leaps in a very short period of time. That's one small step for man. What do you think? Are we going to see a settlement on Mars in our lifetime? Will our future generations have to make the decision of leaving either on Earth or in some futuristic city on Mars? Sounds almost impossible to believe, but we can almost see it happening. That's it for today's video. As always, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all our latest releases. Other than that, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.